Hey y'all, welcome back. This episode, we're gonna do something really cool and really special. We're gonna go and do some rock shelter digging. My family's property, I kinda got my own little private dig site up there. And I'm really excited. It's probably about my favorite thing in the whole world to get to do. So I've not been able to get up there in a couple months and dig anything. I've kinda been on a dry streak up there, not finding much good stuff. But hopefully at a change of day, we'll find something good. But even if we don't, it'll still be fun. Just to give y'all a little idea of what might be laying up there waiting. This is all stuff I found up there in that site. Everything there. Stuff in the back is bone stuff and the stuff on the little little frame up front is some metal stuff from the turn of the century. There's even a little bullet in there, if y'all can tell it. But it's all stuff come from the cliff where we're going today and hopefully we find some more good stuff. Stay tuned, we'll find out. Today, I'm walking all the way there. You see the truck parked up there in the distance by the house. And I'm gonna be hiking it all the way there. Got the shovel, the sifter, pack. There you go. Here's something really cool right next to the path on the way there. It's an old well. And I'd say it's maybe 100 years old. And you can see the little pink ribbon on it there. The guys that come out and do water test samples in behind where the coal companies of strip mine come out here and take water samples out of this well from time to time, as well as from the stream of where behind it. But this thing's still got water in it. No hand drop metal, I bet. Let's see, but I can see a little. Still watering this thing, see the stonework inside? It's pretty cool. But every time I come by here, I think about <clears throat> my old friend. He's up in his 60s now, and he actually lived here when he was a boy with his family right in there. And that area used to sit a house. Well, I think he's maybe, I don't know, seven or 10 years old and the family decided to move up the creek so they dismantled the house board by board with crowbars and claw hammers took everything apart saved every board every nail and then took all the material up the road to where they was moving and completely built their house back straightened all the nails that they pulled recycled all the nails used all the same windows <coughs> And I know that well's cool, but every time I come by here, I think about my buddy and his family taking apart their house here 50 years ago or something and hauling it miles up the road with mules and putting it back together. Pretty crazy.
So this is it, we made it. I was just gonna kinda walk and record for a minute. It'll probably make a little racket, but I just wanna give y'all kind of an idea how big this cliff is. It's not really that big, but this way you can kinda judge and see exactly where I've been digging. Weeks worse than anything. This is it. And I always think too when I'm walking up through here, like this is pretty much unchanged. This is exactly what the people who are staying here from time to time, and I find their stuff, this is exactly what they would have seen when they was walking upon this hundreds or a few thousand years ago. Crazy. Same old route. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna get up there and get settled. I'm getting out of breath. This is it though. No dig site. This is it. Big shelter. Somewhere here's actually the site of it. I've never really found even a chip over here. Here's like the actual habitation site, I guess you'd call it. The overhang above it. Pretty big shelf up above it, but it's really not a big cliff here, and it's not in a like a like a continuous cliff line in the ridge or anything. It's kind of just a little little oddity. There's one other cliff behind me, about 100 yards, and I've checked and checked, and there's not even a speck of flint in it. Uh, very strange that they only wanted to stay right here. And not just people of one era. I mean, stuff I found is over, you know, time periods with thousands of years between them, so it kind of makes you wonder and they just kept coming back to the same place all the time. There's even a cliff over there and another one over there and neither one's got a chip in it. Dry shelters, they face the sun better than this one, but there's just something about this place that they liked. And I found a lot of artifacts here. And even down there, that big sirewood tree is, that's full of stuff from that sirewood that big maple. I've actually found stuff sticking out of the ground there at the base of that maple. Arrowheads. Good ones. You can see down there where I've been digging. The leaf's covered everything up except for my little flint stash I uncovered down there on a little seat they had. It, maybe an anvil or something. But rock was definitely a feature of this campsite. And then I've not dug any of this area. From the back of the tree all the way up to here you can see all this is untouched and probably full of stuff so i'm being systematic about it and trying to take my time and go down deep enough to where i quit finding stuff and then go horizontally with my dig so i'm not missing anything that's kind of what i've done here dug it pretty clean i've been pretty meticulous Take it down to the bedrock. I even sweep the bedrock sometimes. Lots of stuff here, lots of bone, lots of pottery shards. No human bones, animal remains. Muscle shells, some jewelry made from deer teeth. Several points, broke points and good points both. Back there I found some stuff from, I wanna say maybe around 1900. Old steel nails and other stuff I didn't know what it was is steel, an old railroad spike, because there actually was a train run out this holler around 1920, 1930. And a lead bullet, like some kind of muzzle loader bullet or something. It was all right there in that one little corner. I figured, I don't know, some transient or something when the railroad was in here worked for them, didn't have nowhere to stay or something. Maybe stayed up here for a week. That's the best thing I ever found. It's right over here. 
way up under this way, it's right back in there in the back. That's where about the nicest point that I found on this site come from. It's really nice notchy, about three inches long. Translucent, thin, really nice flint, really nice material. But this is it, this is the old big site. You see, it ain't been up here in a while, it's full of leaves. But I'm getting ready to get tore loose here and get started, and I'm gonna tear this thing all to hell. I'm gonna get these leaves up first thing. I brought me a sack, stuff them leaves in a sack, get them out of my way, get all this cleaned up. And I'm gonna start into that wall right there. And I might even go down the hill down here where I found a lot of big Adena atlatl points. Hunt some down there if it's dry enough. But we'll see what turns up. I am definitely excited. Now we got it looking more like an actual dig site. Got all the leaves out there that's going to foul or sift her up, plug the dirt up, keep us from finding stuff. It's looking good. I've seen all kinds of flint chips just all throughout this. Really don't know exactly where I'm going to start. But I'm going to make a decision and get set up here and start making some dirt fly. And all I'm going to use, I know y'all see me carrying my shovel in. The only time I'm going to use that shovel, though, is whenever I get me a big bunch of dirt kind of humped up like this. Where it's loose. And what I'm going to do is dig it all up with a stick. Because anybody that's fooled much with flint knows that in the case of steel versus flint, steel wins every single time. So if I'm in here digging with that big steel shovel, which I can move a lot of ground with, it's real convenient, and a lot of people do that. But if I get in here with a piece of steel, and let's say I hit a, a good arrowhead or a bone tool or a piece of bone or anything like that, jewelry, then that piece of steel is gonna win out and it is at least gonna damage it if it don't completely destroy it, so. I always dig with a stick. From the time I learned how to hunt in rock shelters, I always dig with a stick. Everything that you see here in this pit, it was scooped out of here with a shovel, but it was all excavated with something like that right there. And that big place down the hill too where I was digging, everything I dig, even on a field dig, if I'm out digging in a, a hay field where I know there's artifacts, I always use wood. It's much easier on the stuff you're finding if you already gouge into it. In one case, in a different shelter where I was digging, um, I just happened to dig up a big bone needle, and that was the last thing I was expecting. I mean, a keen one. And I uh, happened to hit it with a piece of wood, and it did not hurt it. So, very big on using wood to dig with. I know a lot of people use steel. Some people use silicone and stuff, but... That's my utensil of choice there. We'll get started here somewhere. Oh man. Well. I'm not going to count my chickens yet, but. Man, that looks pretty close. Look at that. Come on, baby. Ah. Man. It definitely looks like it's been a point to me at one time. Well, it looks like happened. 
is that it's blew up in a fart. It looks like fart popped to me. Looks like a Ford Ancient Point, especially by that camera focus on that beveling there on the back, where it would have been an arrow point where that would have hafted right there. Definitely looks like a, a broke triangular. Looks like it blowed up in a far. Something called far pop. But I'm gonna say that was a point. So, hey, that's a good start, man. A broke one anyway. Blowed up one. All right, here's a little something. But a lot of people that dig already know this. But say you're digging in a place, and you start seeing black looking soil like that. Especially if it's got little flecks of charcoal like this has got. It's hard to see though. But normally the, sh the soil in this area should look like that, like regular clay. So, like if you're hunting for artifacts or whatever and you start seeing darker soil that's definitely a sign of people been there in the past building fires and whatnot could even been where they had this place full of bed material like pine limbs or something six inches 12 inches thick and they rotted over time but definitely sign also when you see chips you know little flint chips church chips whatever you know you're on the money this is just full of them. Now, at first, I thought that was a root. Oh man, it broke a little. As you can see, it is not. It's got some little higher roots hanging off of it. Another nail. But you can see, man, that thing is corroded and rusty. And this one's plumb back here, all the way against the wall. This is dry back here. Well, it's the black that is unnaturally black. It just shows that there was humans there. I've been finding some flint there. 
shows that they was some primitive people here at one time, but there's also been people here in the modern area. Uh, hence this find. But it's not the first one I found here, so I'm really not surprised. I feel like it's pretty old, though, where it would be rusted up like that. Something. It's pretty cool. I'm going to find something else here. See right here, right beside it. Piece of flint, literally right beside it. Two artifacts from two completely different time periods in human history. Indigenous people. People that come here from Europe. Side by side in a cliff in eastern Kentucky. Pretty crazy. Getting back into a little area. Some good looking flint in it. It's a piece, no doubt, that's been heat treated. Slick, colorful, sharp. Been finding a lot of flakes in here. And this clay's kind of red too, like it's been baked a little bit by far. You can even see little bits of charcoal in it. So no doubt there's been a far here and there's also been people here working flint because I've been finding some good chips. I'm gonna turn my camera back on before I got started back here. honking piece of flint but there's even got a little flaking on it I don't know if the camera can see that it's kind of serrated looking I flaked that and made kind of a little rough and ready tool out of that one Try and change my look up a little bit. I've come down the hill here by the big sour wood where I found lots of stuff. Blame me off a little place. There's where I've been at. Just come down the hill a little. Ain't been able to dig this place since the fall. Cause the last time I was digging here, I found a good point right in there. And just as I found it, I heard a buzzing underneath me. And there's this big rotten log that runs up through here. There's a bumblebee nest in it. <clears throat> so that run me out of here. But I mean, it's full of flint. I brought a little container. I'm going to fill it up and show y'all how much material is right here. But I don't think the bees are stirring, so I believe I can get away with trying to dig some. This place is just absolutely loaded with material. No idea why, really, because it's kind of on a slope. And right up there is a nice level dry campsite and man I just wonder all the time why in the hell those people all them years ago was down here on this slope 
down here making spear points and, and at level points. Instead of up there, it really don't make any sense. And there's flint and points up there too, so I don't know. But I found a lot of stuff down here and I just, it just makes me wonder why they got in this one particular little spot down here. And just deposited so much flint there. You can see it on that rock, all those pieces. And so many points, man. I about found a dozen points through here. I really have no explanation as to why. I mean, if it was up through where, yeah, you'd think, well, I mean, they just lost it day to, doing day-to-day -day stuff or throwed it out on accident with their trash. But down here, man, it's like... As much flint, if not more, is up in the shelter, but very perplexing. Anyways, I'm going to quit wind jamming and try to dig something cool here. So here's something I think worth turning on the camera. A little rough woodland looking point. Maybe a Ford Ancient or something. something. A little bird point, most people call it. A little something. I'll keep on digging. Dug out and all those chips in just five minutes or something. I think that's about all the digging I can stand for today. It's getting dark. Let's see, I filled up this whole little container. Just in this area I'm at here around this tree. That rock right there, no doubt, was a seat. It's a little sitting area where they sit and just flaked up a storm. Just a little rough looking point I found down here. Yeah, you can tell this is rich ground. It's just full of stuff. So you figure it's this little circle circular area produce that much material and then multiply that right on down through where towards that tree this whole area is like that but I've dug out there pretty hard I think I've about dug most of that I just need to keep going up the hill but that's it that's about all I can stand I gotta get packed up and get out of here before it gets dark on me and a good dig go home and get cleaned up Made it back home, got everything washed up, and this is pretty much the size of it all. This is the little container of flint that I dug there on the last, right as I was quitting. And there's some pretty stuff come out of it. Been nice to found something, arrowhead or something like that made from that, but I can still make a pretty cool arrowhead out of that myself. A lot of, a lot of different kind of flint there. I just wanted to, wanted to show y'all all the different types that's there. And it's just crazy for, for just one little, one little setting area like that. That's from about an hour's worth of digging. But anyways, here's what we come up with there at the back of the shelter. If y'all remember the nail coming out, there it is. And just a couple little pieces of wood. I'll bring home show, I didn't even clean them up, they still got the dirt on them. Just wood right out of somebody's far pit. And I would say it's probably wasn't from primitive people. I'd say this was from this guy, modern times. Not modern as we know, but you know, maybe a hundred years ago or less close something like that piece of coal probably from modern times guy we'll call him 100 years ago guy what about that but anyway he probably found this down there in the creek took it up there to burn it's been there a long time roots have went plum through it and one little animal bone some kind of small game like a squirrel or a rabbit probably even a bird, I don't know. But that was way back in the back next to all this stuff. It's the only bone I found all day.
no muscle shells or nothing like that. It's that one little animal gone. And then, the one I pulled out when I first started, I seriously believe that this is a little triangular Ford Ancient Point that got blew up in a fire. And what happens, just like you see that that water, that moisture there on this stone, let's say that was inside this stone and that was a whole arrowhead. There's a little solid triangular point. So if this got in a far somehow, say they shot an animal, forgot and left this arrow point in there, forgot it was in there. So the moisture that's inside this stone, when it's exposed to heat, it expands and it pop. And then there it goes however much of the, the arrowhead or the spear point or knife blade or whatever. So I'm going to say that happened through the process of far pop because it's just, come on, focus. It's just too well worked not to be an arrow point. You can see the edges there. And even a little bit where it broke, you can still see the, the flaking platforms there. So I'm gonna say it was a little Ford Ancient Triangular. I found lots of those in there, right, right in the same area where I found this, broke ones and good ones both. And there's a little something I don't think I got on camera and I really don't know what this is. Some kind of little simple tool, I guess. I wouldn't call it a projectile. Any type of point, it's too asymmetrical. It's weird though, like it's been worked. They definitely pressure flaked around it. I'm not focusing there. You can see the flake in there. But I really don't have no idea what they was doing with that. Some kind of little chip of flint that they worked on made some kind of tool out of. And this one. I guess you'd call that the best one we found today. If you could call that a best one. But it's an arrow point. And I'm going to say at one time this was bigger. This could have been, I don't know, this much bigger. And broke. And maybe it's sentimental. Maybe they just liked the material and they wanted to keep part of it that would still be functional at some level. So they made this teeny little teeny little point like this and actually uh, I had something set to the side here I found this in a different shelter just to show the similarities between these and it's probably the same deal I'm going to say it's, I don't think it's so much the, the same typology as this was killer material too this is like Carter Cave or something like that Cane Creek or something but this was probably a bigger point at one time. It broke, and there's like, oh, damn. I love that piece. So they salvaged what they could and made a little rough and ready arrow point, in my opinion. And that's probably the same thing they've done with this one. Because, you know, people get people get sentimental with stuff they hunt with. They use in their dirt in their day-to-day -day lives. So. But anyway, that's about the best one for today. There's all the loot, minus this one. And hope y'all enjoyed following along with me. If you've enjoyed, please hit that like button. And if you ain't already subscribed to the channel, please consider it. But anyways, we'll catch y'all on the next one. Y'all take care.